Imagine stepping onto a plane unlike any other. No windows, no sleek cabins. Just a cavernous space designed to carry tanks, troops, and cargo, but now filled with rows of passengers instead. What if the mighty C-17 Globemaster III, built for war and relief missions, suddenly became your next commercial flight? Would it be thrilling, terrifying, or downright uncomfortable? This isn't just a wild fantasy, it's a thought experiment that tests the limits of aviation itself. So what would actually happen? A US official, while briefing to Reuters, mentioned that the hourly cost to fly a C-17 Globemaster III was estimated to be around $28,000 per hour. In simple terms, that's the starting price to keep this jet in the air for one hour. Because the C-17 is a strategic airlifter, it burns a lot of fuel. The estimate often used in comparisons is roughly 20,000 pounds of fuel per hour. For context, a Boeing 737 burns about 5,000 pounds per hour. So even before we talk about seating or comfort, the C-17 sits at a much higher cost and fuel bracket than a normal airliner. And then there's the capacity to handle huge payloads. On paper, the C-17 can handle a wide range of human payloads. It's designed to airdrop 102 paratroopers with their gear. In medical roles, it can carry up to 48 litter patients and 54 ambulatory patients and attendants, or it can be configured for six high-dependency medical patients or for 36 stretcher patients. In a humanitarian configuration, it can load up to 336 passengers on the cargo floor. Those figures are impressive, but they describe military and relief missions, not day-to-day -day civilian travel. It's not a commercial airline seat. What's even more important here is that when ABC News covered C-17 flights ferrying deportees to Guatemala City, the photo evidence pointed to a passenger deportation setup of approximately 100 seats. That's a realistic operation number once you add security staff, restraints, aisle space, and the practical need to keep the cabin manageable. The original question asked whether it would be more cost-effective to bus deportees to a major hub like Houston Intercontinental and then fill a 737, a 777, or an A320X family jet for the leg to South America. That line of reasoning flows directly into our passenger aircraft angle. If you have to move people at scale, you normally choose the plane that gives you the best seat mile economics. For the record, DHS indicates there were approximately 360,000 deportations in 2019. If you moved 100 people per flight in a C-17, that would come out to approximately 3,600 flights, which is almost 10 transcontinental flights per day in simple equivalents. That's a huge cadence to sustain on a platform that costs around $25,000 per flight hour. So yeah, the cost is not viable at all. Commenters also pointed out that C-17s are available right away and do not have to be contracted, which explains why they appear in urgent or irregular missions. Another commenter noted that nothing says national resolve like a large military jet on a ramp. That optic matters because the mission here is not remotely about seat mile costs. There's also a visual impact factor at play. Bussing people quietly to a hub and boarding a civilian airliner is cheaper, but it's less photogenic and less forceful in public perception. On the other hand, a military tail at a civilian airport can create diplomatic pushback, as one commenter observed, since a destination country may refuse a military flight while accepting a civilian one. The highest voted answer framed a clear security case for using a C-17 in the rare 1% of cases that involve violent criminals, such as extraditing known cartel soldiers. The author argued that normal commercial jets are not fitted for restrained prison or transport and that the C-17's cargo bay has hundreds of D-rings designed to secure loads as heavy as an Abrams tank, which makes the tie-down points essentially unbreakable. The cockpit can maintain pressure while the cargo bay is depressurized, which could help isolate the crew in a worst-case riot. The troop transport layout provides no privacy, which allows guards to see if anyone's trying to pick shackles or tamper with restraints. The author also warned if you treat people like animals, they may act like animals, and a standard airliner interior could need complete replacement after being used for prison transport. A C-17 does not require a traditional towered airport in the same way a scheduled airline service does, and that gives it a logistics edge when moving directly from detention sites or temporary airfields. That advantage forms part of the appeal for irregular time-critical missions. However, when we switch from deportation to the idea of routine passenger service, those strengths turn into constraints. The C-17's floor is a cargo floor, the bay is not lined for civilian comfort, and the aircraft does not integrate smoothly with jet bridges or standard gate procedures. Every normal passenger touchpoint, from boarding to baggage, would need custom workarounds or major modifications. The answer compared operating costs and used a simple per-person model to keep the math transparent. The C-17's burn rate of about 20,000 pounds per hour versus the 737's 5,000 tracks with the expectation that most costs scale with size and fuel burn. It follows that a C-17 will run at least about four times the operating cost of a 737 for similar missions. 
In addition, a typical 737 charter is generally cited between $17,000 and $27,000 per hour, and the midpoint estimate of $22,000 per hour is not far from the stated hourly cost for an already owned C-17. The catch is that fuel and wear on the C-17 are definitely higher, and any irregular schedule or idle time for chartered 737s can skew the totals in either direction. When the answer applied a simple model to a 4-hour flight with a return lag, the rough result was about $2,000 per person on the C-17 and about $1,600 per person on a chartered 737, while a supervised removal on regular commercial flights could be as low as $150 to $300 per person for an Austin to Guatemala City ticket. If we extend the deportation model to general passenger service, the logic still points the same way. The C-17 can move people, and it can do it under tough conditions, but civilians expect windows, climate control, pressurization redundancy with oxygen masks, galleys, lavatories, standard seating, and easy gate access. A C-17 would need extensive interior work to meet those expectations, and even then the seat mile cost would remain high because the core airframe and engine combination are optimized for heavy lift, not frugal crews. In other words, the mission design keeps pulling against the economics of civilian transport. The airline signals power, urgency, and control, but it does so at a high price per hour and a high price per seat. If the goal is a show of force, the C-17 delivers. If the goal is affordable and repeatable passenger service, civilian airliners win every time. Bringing this back to our central question, the fact suggests that a C-17 might be suitable in exceptional cases that need heavy security, direct to site access, and tight control, but it's not a suitable choice for routine passenger transport. The hourly cost is around $25,000, the fuel burn is about four times that of a 737, and practical deployments for people tend to top out near 100 seats in secure configurations. The per-person math lands near $2,000 on the C-17 versus about $1,600 on chartered narrow bodies and roughly $150 to $300 on regular commercial tickets. Those are the numbers, those are the trade-offs, and that's how the deportation argument naturally rolls into the broader verdict on the C-17 as a passenger aircraft. Aviation expert and experienced pilot Joe Shelton offers a clear perspective on why a military workhorse like the C-17 might not be the best choice for civilian passenger service. While he acknowledges it could be done, Shelton draws from both technical knowledge and personal experience, including a freezing medevac flight on a C-141 from Vietnam, to outline the flaws. The C-17's cargo bay isn't built for comfort, warmth, or the amenities civilians expect. Luggage storage would be awkward, oxygen systems aren't in place, and the aircraft isn't designed for standard airport boarding gates. Kitchens for in-flight meals would need to be built from scratch. Essentially, the C-17 excels at moving troops and equipment, not making passengers comfortable. As Shelton points out, converting it for commercial use would require major modifications, making it far from ideal compared to purpose-built airliners. Qatar's Emory Air Force has a C-17 too. It's not used like a normal airline plane. The plane is painted like a gray military jet, showing up as a standard military cargo plane. You could put people on it if you wanted, but the cabin is not comfortable like a regular airline. It's not meant for passengers. For normal airline business, the C-17 is not a good choice. It costs too much. It uses too much fuel. Maintenance is expensive. The engines are powerful, but they guzzle fuel compared to modern efficient turbofans on commercial jets. And then comes the cabin. No windows, dense seating, zero comfort. Passengers would hate the experience. In a competitive industry like aviation, where margins are thin, this would make the business model collapse. The economics of the C-17 simply don't work. Airlines like Qatar Airways rely on efficient jets like the A350 or Boeing 787 for long-haul routes. These jets are designed to carry hundreds of passengers at a much lower cost per seat. A C-17 could never compete in this space. So, will Qatar Airways ever buy a C-17 to carry regular passengers? No chance. The airline's brand is built around luxury, comfort, and efficiency. Their fleet choices, like the Airbus A350 and Boeing 777, reflect that. Putting passengers in a military cargo jet would completely contradict what Qatar Airways stands for. But let's imagine, just for a second, a wild scenario where they did. Maybe it's for a special event, a publicity stunt, or some unusual contract. Qatar Airways could strip out the military interior and add seats. They might try to market it as an adventure flight. But even then, it would be impractical beyond a one-off experience. Interestingly, while it's not built for passengers, the C-17 has carried them in floor-loaded emergencies. During evacuations, humanitarian crises, or disaster relief missions, the C-17s have transported civilians, soldiers, and aid workers. A famous example was the Afghanistan evacuation in 2021, where C-17s carried hundreds of people out of Kabul in chaotic conditions. In such cases, the C-17 shows its value. It can land in rough places, load up quickly, and get people to safety. 
but those are emergency missions, not routine airline flights where passengers were seated in regular airline seats. Passengers put up with discomfort because survival and safety are the priority. Airlines don't just move bodies from point A to point B. They sell experiences, convenience, and reliability. Qatar Airways, for example, wins awards because it provides luxury seats, world-class service, and a smooth flying experience. None of that's possible in a C-17. The aircraft's design is utilitarian to the extreme. The noise levels are high, there's no pressurized comfort like a Dreamliner, and efficiency is abysmal. Even budget airlines wouldn't touch something like this. They might compromise on legroom or meals, but they still need aircraft designed for passengers like the Airbus A320 or Boeing 737. No commercial carrier is willing to sacrifice all passenger experience for something so inefficient. In conclusion, the idea of Qatar Airways operating a C-17 is fun to imagine, but it's pure fantasy. The plane is a brilliant piece of engineering for its intended role, military aircraft. But in the world of commercial aviation, it has no place. It's too expensive, too inefficient, and far too uncomfortable. At best, you might see governments or militaries using C-17s in partnership with airlines during emergencies. But as a regular part of an airline fleet, impossible. Qatar Airways will stick with jets like the A350, which balance efficiency, comfort, and luxury. The C-17 is a legend, but it belongs to the skies of defense, not the runways of Doha.